Kirchner Coveo for Secor demo webinar session. I'll be your host. My name is Clara Boulanger. I work on the marketing team here at Coveo, and I'm really excited to be a part of today's session. I'm also thrilled to be joined by our speaker, Paul Sheridan, who is a sales engineer at Coveo. I have a couple of housekeeping items to cover quickly before we get started. First, everyone is in listen-only mode. However, we do want to hear from you during today's presentation. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session, so please feel free to send those along using the Q&A section on your screen. Today's webinar is being recorded, and you'll receive the presentation within 24 hours of the conclusion of the event. Finally, there will be a brief survey at the end of the session. Please help us improve future webinars by providing your feedback on the webinar content and experience. For those of you just joining us, welcome to our Cobero for Sitecore demo webinar session. Now let's get started. Paul, please take it away. Mm, thank you, Clara, and welcome everyone to today's session. Um, our monthly uh, webinar typically focused around Caveo for Sitecore, uh, and today we're going to be focusing a little bit differently, perhaps, uh, than, than we sometimes do, uh, on really uh, why uh, why Caveo in the cloud, why search in the cloud, uh, and also uh, why artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, is particularly applicable to website search and recommendation uh, requirements. So that's me, how about that? <laughs> and we'll quickly uh, go through uh, roughly what the uh, agenda is for today. As I mentioned, this is perhaps a little different than, the, than some of the monthly uh, demo webinars that we do. We typically uh, take a fairly detailed dive into a number of customer example websites and, and how Caveo integrates in particular with Sitecore CMS. Uh, today we're gonna spend a little more time in, in the wonderful world of PowerPoint talking about uh, customer expectations with regard to relevance and search, uh, challenges with search, how machine learning uh, in the cloud uh, can be uh, a key component of your website search and, and relevance requirements. Uh, and, and we will also, of course, show some, some demo websites to, to kind of dig into a little bit of, uh, of the features and functions that Caveo brings, uh, brings to the table. And that's basically our agenda for today. So I'm going to start off, as I mentioned, at a bit of a higher level to talk about customer expectations with regard to uh, to website search. Um, some surveys that uh, that have been provided by the uh, uh, Salesforce Research uh, Division really indicate that um, people's expectations for websites are being driven by their experience in the consumer world, of course. Uh, searching through Google, searching through Amazon, being able to, to purchase things, expecting some degree of personalization. It, it does appear more and more that, that people's expectations are, are being driven by their experiences as consumers, even when they're on a more perhaps mm, B2B uh, website uh, or, or even business to consumer kind of websites that are not. Amazon that are not Google. Uh, there, there is this increasing expectation uh, that uh, that websites should be modernized. The search experience, the purchasing experience, the personalization experience uh, should be modernized and, and improved to meet their uh, their expectations. A few other thoughts as well around search and recommendations. Of course, mobile uh, interfaces are becoming more and more uh, common. Uh, I'm finding this <laughs> even myself, even, even as a, a person who is far from, uh, you know, quote unquote, a millennial, uh, I do a lot more of my uh, web uh, traffic uh, on my mobile devices. Uh, uh, interesting to see that uh, expectations or the uh, surveys are showing that about 63% of web traffic now is uh, being spent on, on mobile devices. Um, and I thought the, uh, uh, our, our marketing team put together, I thought, I thought a funny uh, uh, comment here that uh, people's ex uh, attention spans are much, much shorter nowadays. Of course, that's something, I guess, is a bit of a truism, uh, but uh, even shorter than that of a goldfish. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure that's always true, but uh, people do tend to uh, have a short attention span. So it's from the point of view of designing a website, designing search, uh, designing relevance of, of content, you have to expect that people are not going to spend a lot of time refining their queries, uh, navigating around your site. If they don't find what they're looking for very quickly, they're going to go somewhere else. Search, of course, a key part. Well, you know, we certainly feel so as a company that provides search and relevance technology uh, and, and user experience. Search is a really a key component of, uh, of any website. Um, in conjunction with navigation, search and navigation kind of go very much hand in hand nowadays. It's not just about, as it says here, providing results for a query, but also providing results in context, providing uh, recommendations in, in the context of the user, whatever information you 
understand about that user, whether they're logged in or not, where they're physically located, um, and the, uh, you know, are they already a customer? What are they? What have they purchased of your products already? That sort of contextual information can and should uh, influence uh, the order of, uh, of results that are being returned or influence the recommendations that you're making on their site in an intelligent way, uh, becoming more and more obvious. And I, I do think, just personally, it's also very important to be very transparent to the people uh, who are interacting with you on your website in terms of personalization, in terms of why things are being recommended to them as well. Uh, it's all well and good to make these recommendations, but uh, you know there may be cases for example, a user has purchased a product from you already. You can make recommendations around that product, certainly, but it may be that they're actually looking to purchase something entirely different on your site. So being able to allow the user to, un, you know, to back out of those personalized uh, selections can also be an important part, depending on your, your business's use case. Um, recommendations also, uh, I think, a key component of this as well, not just returning search results per se, but perhaps recommendations in a side panel, you know, just visually speaking, when you're when a customer is looking at a, a detailed product page, say, well, you you know, other people like yourself who've looked at this product have also looked at these um, related products or or accessories, perhaps. So these kind of recommendations driven by context, driven by um, perhaps the queries that the user has done, but also driven by their context. Where are they? What kind of customer are they, that sort of thing, their persona perhaps. These all key uh, components of any modern uh, website uh, experience in, in, our, in our view. We often uh, talk about a, a bit of a formula perhaps, it's not quite a mathematical formula, but uh, a, a formula by which the relevance of information is being returned to the user uh, can be constructed. Um, and really, it derives, we feel, from, from two different areas. Content, certainly. What, what information do you have that you want to serve up to your users? Whether this is a product catalog, whether this is a, a list of support documents, whether this is documentation around, around your product. Um, all that content that needs to be searchable. And you need to choose carefully what, uh, what content you should actually expose and, and, and search on, and, and perhaps tune. Uh, the, the relevance of results that come back from that content is, is, is one part, certainly. But as I was mentioning earlier, the context of the user, what do you understand about them? What sort of signals uh, are, are, is that user sending? Clearly what they type into the search box, perhaps, but also what selections they might make in terms of filters or facets uh, on your site. Um, again, you know, as I mentioned, if you understand something about who that person is, uh, are they a customer? You, know, you can pass that kind of information into the query to have an influence on, on the relevance of results being returned. Trying to derive some idea of the user's intent, again, based on, uh, on the, the clues that they're giving you, the, the, the words that they're typing into the, the search box, perhaps, what part of your uh, site they're on when they're performing a search. This is all information that Caveo in particular, and we're not really talking entirely about the Caveo product at this time, but just in general relevance, but Caveo uh, is able to log uh, behavioral analytics information. Behavioral analytics sounds like a very broad topic. We really focus in on queries, clicks, page views, navigation events, those sort of things. Those are all being logged and being fed into Kaveo's machine learning technologies. So we're learning from user behavior, potentially influenced by different users' contexts as well, in order to make recommendations, in order to uh, promote better query suggestions, type ahead query, if you will, in order to promote automatically the content that other similar users have uh, made use of when, when they've done similar sorts of queries in order to uh, make those recommendations, again, uh, those sort of side panel, here's a related thing that you may be interested in. And we're deriving or trying to uh, guess at, to a certain extent, in an intelligent way, the in intent of the user when they perform a particular query in a particular context. So machine learning as a technology being applied to this usage analytics or behavioral analytics uh, information can start to make some relatively intelligent guesses about the user's intent. And that is really what feeds into the relevance of content that, that users are, are seeing on your site. And we'll show you a little bit uh, more detail, of course, about what, uh, what all this means. Uh, really only possible at scale with, with machine learning, artificial intelligence, if you will, uh, as, a, as a, a technology platform. <clears throat> and why, why do we make that sort of claim? Because you certainly can also create 
uh, rules, more manual rules around personalization, around recommendation, and that's not necessarily a terrible idea. But to be able to really learn from user behavior, to really make those personalized recommendations, you really need to be able to do some form of, of processing on a really, really large amount of, of data, both content and that unified interaction, that behavioral analytics information to deliver personalization at scale. Again, the, the manual approach to personalization it, it's not a bad place to get started. Our partner at Sitecore, our partner at Sitecore, of course, does a really interesting job of allowing administrators to define personas and rules, manual rules for how to categorize users, how to how to personalize content, and Kaveo can work with that as well. Absolutely, we think that's a, a a good starting point. But to really be able to do that at scale, you're going to need to apply machine learning technologies here uh, to your content and to your users' interaction uh, at at scale. This naturally, to us anyway, leads to, well, why do you need to be running in, quote unquote, the cloud? And I think these, these points are relatively obvious. Uh, the the cloud-based processing platforms or, or, or technologies uh, really take advantage of two major things, the ability to deal with really large amounts of data. As you can imagine, on some of our customers, larger customers' websites, there's a lot of usage analytics behavior. There's a lot, you know, millions of uh, interactions uh, daily, uh, searches, queries, clicks, purchases, creation of support cases, uh, all that huge amount of data has to be stored. And storing that locally in a database on your premises becomes really untenable over a, over a long period of time. And also the computing power required to process that information. You know, machine learning technologies do take a fair amount of, uh, of computing power. And the advent, of course, of, of cloud uh, cloud-hosted uh, services really allow you to do that in a much more scalable way than than you possibly could do on premises unless you're uh, you know working with supercomputer size uh, networks and so on. So Caveo uh, as a as a company we are in the relevance business the search business we have been for a, a long time now uh, and. Over the last several years, we've uh, we've in particular been making a big migration to the cloud and putting uh, a lot of effort into this usage analytics, this behavioral analytics, uh, as well as our traditional approaches to indexing content from a wide variety of sources and to uh, being able to tune the relevance uh, of results, both manually through the sorts of rules that we've been discussing, but also through uh, the application of machine learning technologies to, uh, to automatically tune relevance and recommendations. Um, I've, I think I've talked through a fair bit of the, the items on this slide as well, but uh, what is the Caveo platform all about? Well, as I mentioned, the search relevant insights platform, uh, cloud-based indexing and search as a service. Uh, we do provide a, an open source JavaScript framework from a user interface point of view to build your search user interfaces. Uh, of course, much of what we're showing you today is around the context of Sitecore as a, a content management platform, and we do have a particularly tight integration to Sitecore, both from the point of view of connectivity and also from the point of view of designing your search interface it can be done within the uh, within the Sitecore experience uh, editor uh, platform um, we do have connectivity of course to a wide variety of uh, sources both sort of web type applications blogs um, other content management systems of course uh, also to more application level uh, platforms, uh, SharePoint, uh, Box, Dropbox, and so on. We also do have a variety of indexing APIs, both a, a push API, so applications can push content to the Caveo cloud to be indexed, and also a, a, a what we call generic REST API. So if we're connecting to an application that does expose a, a REST-based API, we can do that. We can pull out the content that you want to have indexed, that you want to make searchable, both full text of documents, of course, and also metadata uh, that can be used for search and also for filtering, faceting, display, and so on. Um, we also, again, and we've described this, or I've described this a little bit, uh, provide a machine learning engine that's focused really on uh, on relevant search results and recommendations. And again, you know, machine learning as a technology here uh, is, in particular, what we're doing is we're applying that technology, that process, I guess, to usage analytics, behavioral analytics, with the very specific um, goal of providing more relevant content, better query re recommendations, um, uh, and, and we'll show you some examples of that. And of course, the fourth item here, usage analytics, we've talked about that, uh, or I've talked about that uh, a fair bit here, and we'll show you a, a bit of what I mean as we go through the rest of today's session. 
Um, I did mention, and we have mentioned a few times, in particular, uh, Sitecore. We, uh, over the last seven years or so, Caveo and Sitecore have worked very closely together to create and improve, uh, um, by leaps and bounds over time, uh, integration to the Sitecore content management platform. So uh, we, from an indexing point of view, we're, we're integrated directly with the Sitecore search provider API and rules engine, so that as new pages are published or updated, new content is, is created within Sitecore, uh, it can be pushed to the Caveo cloud to be indexed basically immediately. Uh, the, you can decide what parts of pages should be indexed, what kinds of items, um, what uh, metadata uh, should be indexed and searchable uh, through that uh, very tight integration to the search provider API. We also do potentially provide the, uh, the ability to work with Sitecore's personalization platform uh, in order to um, leverage any of those rules that you're creating uh, with Sitecore personas and profile cards to automatically promote the most relevant content based on those rules uh, that, that many Sitecore customers have gone to the trouble of, uh, of defining. Uh, so you, you definitely want to take advantage of that. If you're doing that personalization work in Sitecore, absolutely, your search needs to take advantage of, of that work uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> we talk a bit about uh, ease of use here. Uh, again, this is really focused on the user interface creation. The idea here is that the Caveo search UI components uh, are wrapped up in Sitecore, um, uh, Sitecore module that is installed on the Sitecore server. So when your Sitecore administrators are creating and configuring and perhaps changing uh, the user experience, Caveo components are right there. They can be used right within uh, the experience editor. It doesn't require another developer perhaps to come in and, and with a different set of skills uh, build an external search interface. It's, it's a part of the, the, the Sitecore uh, experience. And out of the box, yeah, providing uh, the usage analytics, uh, the machine learning models, uh, and so on, uh, are intentionally kept very simple to, uh, to define. And we'll show you a bit of what, uh, what all that means, of course, as we get into the demo portion of today's, uh, today's session. Um, specific to Caveo in the cloud, and really, you know, not, not necessarily talking about um, in just about Sitecore or uh, or just about you know machine learning as a, as a technology. One of the some of the benefits of uh, of a cloud-based platform are certainly the kind of things that Caveo provides: indexing and search, you know, quote unquote, as a service. Um, it's much quicker, of course, than installing software uh, on your uh, in, in your own environment. In the past, Caveo had also provided an on-premises uh, version. Uh, so you could build your index on a server or a number of servers perhaps within your environment. With the Caveo Cloud, we feel and our customers are, are certainly saying uh, there's a much quicker time to value. You don't need to worry about configuring servers in your environment. Um, your Sitecore server can certainly reside on-premises or in the cloud, but your Caveo uh, instance really does reside uh, in the cloud, there's no no configuration. Maintenance, of course, much simpler. Um, you don't need to worry about keeping your your hardware up to date and patching any operating system uh, issues and so on uh, for your actual index. Um, high availability is provided standard. It's uh, we provide it as a service. Um, you do have a, a dedicated uh, tenant as well. Your and what that really means is that your search index is completely separate from everybody else's within within the Caveo cloud platforms. It's a, a single tenant uh, infrastructure. Security is also something that we we provide for you. It's uh, we're uh, compliant or uh, certified uh, with a number of uh, different uh, standards. SOC 2, uh, for example, um, we do provide the option of a HIPAA compliant uh, version uh, of the Caveo cloud as well. Uh, we also find uh, uh, pricing is sort of an interesting uh, part here. Um, we do uh, strive to provide a very simple and transparent pricing model, uh, consumption-based uh, pricing model primarily uh, with the cloud so that you can really understand what it is you're paying for uh, and make sure that it does, in fact, correspond to your usage of the product. Um, just, we've got a little animated slide here that uh, illustrates uh, a bit of the workflow, if you will, uh, around what happens when somebody comes to your site and performs a search when you're using Caveo on the back end. So uh, if you'll bear with me for just a couple minutes, we'll walk through uh, this process. So your, your users hit your website. Your website, in this case, uh, is running on Sitecore. So when the user starts to do some things on your site, clicking on pages, logging in, uh, and so on, Sitecore potentially, if you're using Sitecore's personalization capabilities, can identify what kind of user this is. Uh, again, if you're using Sitecore personalization and those rules. So you could say, 
um, oh, I'm, I've decided this user is a business, a business type person. I want to do, I want to provide certain kinds of content recommendations to them. Well, as the user starts to come to your search box, and inevitably they do, search, type in a query, of course, Caveo can start to make some recommendations around uh, good quality queries. And this is derived from those usage analytics as well and machine learning applied to them. Other users like you who've started to type in these first couple characters have searched for these particular phrases, these additional, uh, and, and, and had successful searches for these particular phrases. I'll, I'll show you an example of this in just a second to, to illustrate more clearly what I mean. Of course, when the user start, uh, actually selects a, a suggested query, in fact, does a search, that information is passed not only to the Sitecore Experience database logged there, but also to the Caveo Usage Analytics platform, along with, again, any contextual information we have about that user. What's their persona? Where are they physically located? What kind of device are they on, mobile versus non-mobile? And the experience database uh, can, uh, again, make some recommendations around persona. Uh, Caveo's machine learning platform then can also start to make some recommendations around uh, query results. So combining together here, potentially recommendations that uh, that you've defined via rules through the Sitecore Experience Database, recommendations that Caveo is able to make based on uh, what we understand of your context as well as what has been successful for other users in the past. And of course, combined together with that, Caveo certainly does traditional uh, search uh, uh, search results returned from the unified index that, of course, may extend across not just Sitecore content, but many other kinds of sources as well. These results then are also returned to the user, formatted by Sitecore, uh, and can uh, can be displayed uh, according to the uh, the rules and the layout that you've defined in your in your Sitecore environment. And of course, the results and and the outcomes of of those results. Does the user click on anything? Do they select any facets? Do they re revise their query further? All that information also feeds into the usage analytics platform and potentially can have an impact on machine learning recommendations in the future. So hopefully that was a helpful little overview of um, how the various components of Sitecore, Caveo traditional search techniques, Caveo machine learning, all can work together to make for a better user experience. And with that, I'm actually going to switch over and show you uh, a bit of a, a different, uh, pardon me, uh, we'll, we'll show you some uh, examples of, uh, of uh, uh, Caveo in action on actual customer websites here, if you bear with me for a second, while I try and share my screen. And there we go. So we always do like to uh, to show off some real life examples of uh, of Caveo and Sitecore working together, and we try and pick, especially for this sort of demo uh, webinar situation where we have many different kinds of customers and partners involved, uh, a few significantly different kinds of examples to show you how search and relevance can have uh, a positive impact on uh, on different kinds of use cases. I'm going to start off here today with uh, Alcatel Lucent, and they're uh, their site is primarily, um, primarily but not entirely, uh, customer service or, or documentation focused, and they've got quite a wide variety of content types uh, on their site, whether it's uh, uh, videos, reference documents, uh, information about the products that they provide, uh, uh, content in a variety of languages, as you can imagine here as well. And they also provide the ability, using Caveo components here, to allow the user to filter down to certain kinds of, uh, of information. So uh, they're, they're applying tags to their content, which for the most part does uh, reside in Sitecore, uh, in order for Caveo to be able to provide uh, navigable facets. And you can see that these facets, in fact, are hierarchical in nature in their particular case, and allow the user to really easily drill down to particular kinds of content. So these filters or facets on the left-hand side are standard Caveo components that you can deploy or customize or configure as you see fit. Uh, also, the uh, the tabs across the top here, the, uh, where's my mouse gone? Uh, all customer references, resources, videos, that's also a standard Caveo component. So they've built their search interface uh, using these Caveo components within the context of Sitecore in order to have as uh, clear and easily usable uh, a user experience as possible. Other things that uh, they make use of with, with Caveo as well include um, query suggestion, so as I start to type in uh, a search, 
users, of course, expect this sort of behavior where uh, as I put in more uh, more letters effectively, I can get uh, I can get better and better quality query suggestions. And in in fact, um, what we see here is that even though I don't perhaps know how to spell the word telephone correctly, I can still get a good quality query suggestion because other users have been successful with this particular search. Uh, so it's very much the kind of experience that again we're we're all used to as consumers as people who use google.com perhaps or amazon or or various other uh consumer oriented sites but this is very much focused on alcatel's own uh, own site and the user behavior that ex that has been happening on that site so this is uh, a way to leverage both uh rules based and machine learning based approaches to better quality query suggestions so that's one of the the, the machine learning models that uh, that caveo provides of course, when you, you know, when you do a search, uh, you're going to get results. You can decide uh, how these results should be laid out. You might want to show different uh, metadata uh, around uh, each of these results as well. And you might also want to be able to uh, do a quick preview, perhaps, of content such as PDF files here. So Kaveo is indexing, of course, not just the metadata, but also the full text of the content. And you can see here that we can navigate through um, uh, the various search terms uh, within this PDF file in a, in a quick uh, highlight, um, sorry, quick view uh, HTML format uh, of that document. Many other search features and functions, and I'm not going to go through them all in the time we have today. Really, just want to show uh, a quick overview of the sort of things that you can do with Caveo. You will notice also the ability not just to filter by uh, these sort of metadata fields, but also to sort by them as well. And in the example of Alcatel, they've got relatively simple. Uh, uh, options here, being able to sort by date or relevance, but you certainly could pick any other uh, data field that, that you're passing to Caveo, whether it's numeric or text or date-based, uh, to, to sort or filter your results as well. Price, perhaps, or um, uh, rating, if, if that information is being, uh, being indexed by Caveo. So uh, I think a relatively nice, uh, clean, simple example of, uh, of Caveo implemented within a site core environment here at uh, Alcatel Lucent. Um, I'm going to pick two other examples to show you. Uh, one, a relatively recent uh, implementation uh, at Metro Health uh, in Ohio. Uh, they're a healthcare provider. Uh, and their focus, of course, is on finding the right information for uh, for people who uh, may be patients or may be um, prospective patients uh, of their organization. As I start to type in a query, once again here, we're able to make some good quality query suggestion. Perhaps I'm looking for information about headaches. Now, uh, in the case of Metro Health, there's really three main different kinds of information that they have. There's in, uh, doctors who can help you with a particular problem, of course, services, uh, generally speaking, just content that they're providing, and also the locations where uh, where they uh, where they uh, where they can serve their uh, their clients. When I dig into the doctors section in particular, uh, they've decided they actually want to expose <coughs> those filters and facets in a bit of a different way to these sort of drop downs, still the same kind of capability. I'm looking for doctors at a particular location or perhaps by gender, uh, whether they treat adults, children, seniors, what languages they speak in, in many cases. Uh, in this case here, it looks like they don't have uh, uh, doctors who speak additional languages beyond in, in English. But to me, this is an interesting example of really picking your filters and facets appropriate to the use case, appropriate to how your user, what your users are looking for. Um, when you're looking for a doctor, it's useful to know where they're located, of course. Do they speak your language? Uh, do they treat people of your particular uh, age group and so on? When you look at locations, on the other hand, and again, I think they've done quite a nice, uh, quite a nice job of this. Uh, they're returning again Caveo results in this case in a kind of a card format down here. Uh, all these different locations, I can search for uh, particular services and such. But the results are also being brought back, back in a map format, which can be really useful when, when you're looking for a particular clinic in in your neighborhood, perhaps. So. This is, of course, a Google map here at the top, but this is, these are Caveo search results being uh, served up uh, in, that, uh, in that environment. You'll also notice here you can sort by distance. So depending on your location, uh, if you're indexing the latitude, longitude uh, of the locations, as, as, as they are here, of their, uh, of their clinics, um, you can allow the user to select a particular uh, location here. Let's say, where are we? Um, <laughs> we're in Cleveland. Okay. I can put in. Cleveland here, well, I spelled it wrong, but it's okay. We can still make good uh, query recommendations. And I can sort by distance, or I can say I'm looking for 
uh, only services within five miles of uh, where I am. And again, this is Caveo's capability here to, to sort and filter by distance, as long as you're passing to us location information, say, as a latitude, longitude. I think the last example I'm going to show you today uh, of a customer is uh, is a more commerce-related uh, example, and this is Milwaukee Electric Tool. Uh, they make and sell uh, a variety of uh, hardware products, uh, tools, as you can see here, drills and saws and all kinds of interesting things. Um, again, from a layout point of view, they've uh, taken a bit of a different approach. They allow the users to, again, narrow results based on category, availability. Availability clearly important for a, an online commerce uh, service. Uh, what particular kind of system are you looking for cordless or corded uh, products and so on and once again for them um, a Query suggestion is very uh, important uh, to be quite specific about what it is you're looking for I'm looking for a hammer drill. I'm looking for a very particular kind of hammer drill cordless corded a particular model So again these suggestions really being driven partly by metadata product names, but also by user behavior, uh, machine learning applied to uh, this usage analytics information in order to make good quality query suggestions. I'm looking for a cordless rotary hammer drill, and here they are. Now, from a layout point of view, they've actually gone for a very uh, visual sort of layout. Of course, you can you can dig in here and look at the actual detail information on, on price and, and specifications and where to buy and so on. But uh, from a search layout point of view, clearly they've they've built quite a different interface to the, the other two that we saw. And I think this really speaks to how you can use uh, custom style sheets uh, that we do provide to allow you to completely customize the look and feel of your, your search experience to make it fit into your overall uh, site design. I'm going to sw switch over uh, just for a couple minutes and show you a little bit of the, the Caveo back end, if you will, the Caveo platform, the cloud platform we've talked about quite a bit today. Um, and I'd like to start off often by showing you some of this information about uh, uh, about usage analytics uh, information. So w what is Caveo logging and, and how can you, as an administrator, make use of that information? Uh, this is just my own demo organization. It's not a terribly busy uh, site, um, but you can see here that we do give you information about uh, the uh, how busy your site is, number of queries, number of clicks, how many unique users. This is some of that context information. Where is this user coming from? We're logging uh, based on their IP address, although we don't store the IP address. Where are they? What region? What city, perhaps, even? Um, you can see here that I've got people from the province of Ontario, where I'm currently located, but also, in fact, from uh, the Netherlands, where I was uh, at, at this time uh, a few months back. Uh, what devices? Are they mobile, non-mobile? What kind of browsers? What are the most common queries, the most popular documents? And all of these reports are very configurable and also very interactive. I could click here and see, well, what was it that people uh, in the province of Flevoland in the Netherlands uh, were searching for uh, at that time period? I think from a business analyst point of view, this, this sort of information becomes even more valuable. When you start to dig into uh, information about um, the outcome, uh, of searches, uh, did the what are the most popular queries that came up with no results, or didn't lead to clicks, or other custom events perhaps, and uh, aggregate statistics such as query click-through percentage and average click rank tend to be really interesting to a business analyst. This gives you an idea of how well your site is performing um, from the user's point of view. Are, are you providing them with information that is helping them do what they need to, to do, whether it's uh, solve their own customer support problem or purchase a product or simply find a document that they that they want to find on your site. So these kind of reports often uh, are used by our customers in conjunction with perhaps their own business analyst people, their, uh, their implementation partners, especially in the Sitecore world, and also our own uh, customer success team to understand, well, what do I need to do to make my site better from the point of view of creation of um, t relevance tuning rules or changing the layout of my site or tuning my machine learning models perhaps to make better recommendations. And that's often, all of that is often done through what we call our query pipelines. So a query pipeline is really where you can define manual or automatic rules for the tuning of, uh, of relevance of results. And the sorts of things that you can do in here would include traditional search techniques such as synonyms and a thesaurus, featured results, top results for particular queries, although you'll notice that you can also apply conditions to these sort of top results to say, based on what search page the user's on or where they're physically located, I might want to have a different top result for that search. And you can define 
uh, other kinds of ranking expressions or boosting rules, once again, to promote certain kinds of content, uh, perhaps your frequently asked questions pages, if you're uh, if you define them well, they may be a, a great place or a great type of um, result to, to boost uh, through a manual rule such as this uh, through the Caveo query pipeline. I'm not going to go through all of this today. It is really intended to be a, a pretty high level overview of the capabilities of Caveo. And you can see that there are lots of other options within a, a query pipeline. Now, um, uh, what I will also show you, though, is a little bit about uh, how you would work with Caveo's machine learning platform. And we intentionally keep this simple. Um, we don't want to give you too many. We don't want our customers to have to become data scientists in order to take advantage of what what our technology is learning from user behavior. So, um, the options that you are able to tune here within a machine learning model are relatively uh, simple. Um, how much data? are we going to use for to, to, to train our system? Uh, how frequently will we update it? And this, these sort of decisions would typically be based around how widely does the search behavior on your site change over time? Uh, some sites are very seasonal in nature. People be, will be searching for something very different on your site at Christmas time versus in the summertime, for example. So that might influence your decision around this training set definition. You can also decide to uh, uh, define different machine learning models, perhaps for users from a different country or users on a different search page uh, on your site, uh, and that's where you would make this decision around the, uh, around which events to train your your site on. You can also apply conditions to the output of your machine learning. So you might only uh, have recommendations or, or results promoted by machine learning for certain kinds of users. A mobile device, not a great example, um, but uh, logged in users or users in a certain country, perhaps. And you can also have some control over how much rele uh, the relevance of your results is going to be influenced by machine learning. And as the machine starts to learn, of course, you're probably going to have minimal uh, uh, impact on, on, on relevance. We rely more on those manual rules around tuning and, honestly, traditional search techniques, uh, of which we take advantage of very many. Um, but then as we start to learn, you can start to uh, increase this ranking modifier, if you will. And we'd also suggest that you may want to test uh, well, we suggest that you should uh, test the output of these different query pipelines with our A-B testing capability here. So you can send perhaps 10% of your users to your new machine learning tuned pipeline and 90% to your traditional pipeline and compare the results based on those sort of statistics that we saw about uh, uh, click-through percentage and average click rank, for example. Finally, for the last part of the um, the look into the Caveo Cloud Platform. I'd just briefly like to highlight the different kinds of sources that we're able to, to index. You can see uh, some of them here using uh, our Sitecore uh, integration, of course, websites that we can crawl, uh, YouTube channels, Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, um, our indexing API, many different kinds of sources. And typically, as an administrator, you would pick which sites, which applications, which platforms you want to index, and how you want to index them. And it's very uh, we, we try to make this, again, simple and clean uh, to use so you can decide uh, what websites you want to index and how you want to index them. Uh, for example, um, based on inclusion rules, you can set up schedules for re-indexing of your content and so on. And then finally, very briefly, uh, I'm just going to log into a Sitecore, my little Sitecore uh, <laughs> instance here, and show you a little bit about what Caveo looks like in the context of Sitecore. As I mentioned, I hope I mentioned, uh, we install a, a component or a package uh, on the Sitecore server, which allows you to manage uh, how your content, your Sitecore content, is going to be indexed. It's again pushed uh, to Caveo through the standard indexing pipelines uh, of Sitecore. This is also where you can uh, configure. Uh, any other options around what fields should be indexed and so on. And then, of course, there's the front end, uh, so the designing of those search pages, those search experiences within the context of Sitecore uh, is done within the, the Sitecore experience editor. So I've created a couple of different search pages here, and I can manage them within my Sitecore experience editor. I should mention as well, of course, um, Caveo's search components, those JavaScript, that JavaScript framework that I mentioned relatively briefly, is also available and supported in, in non-Sitecore environments as well. Uh, so th these same kind of components that you see here, uh, a filter or a facet, uh, the search box itself, the various options around um, uh, automatic spelling correction or uh, the result list templates, these are all also available in the non-Sitecore world, uh, but we are 
primarily focusing on today's session on Caveo within Sitecore as well. And of course, we do have customers who make use of both Sitecore and non-Sitecore content and sites. So <clears throat> uh, what I just want to emphasize real briefly in, in this section is that, uh, again, uh, as a, a Sitecore administrator, someone who's creating Sitecore content and Sitecore pages, I'm able to use these components rather than having to write code uh, in order to define, configure, reconfigure, change uh, my, my Sitecore uh, uh, user experience. I can also get in here and uh, have a, an impact on uh, on search results based on uh, and the search experience based on based on Sitecore de uh, definitions here. I may want to promote certain kinds of content based on where they come from in the Sitecore content tree. I may want to take advantage of uh, Sitecore personalization if I'm using that to promote again certain kinds of content um, and a wide variety of other options available to you here, including pulling in content from external content sources. So those non-Sitecore websites and YouTube channels and so on can simply be included uh, here in this external content box in order to include them uh, in the results that you're returning within the Sitecore environment. With that, I'm just briefly gonna switch back into the world of PowerPoint to finish up today's session. So um, just a, a, a brief walkthrough of some of the things uh, to think about when you're looking to uh, move to the Caveo Cloud uh, and machine learning powered search and recommendation. We really feel you know planning is a key part of uh, of any implementation of any of any software. Understanding what um, what the use case is for relevance for search uh, on, on your site. Is this a commerce-based application? Is this a support application? Is it a com combination of the two? Um, and you know, together we often work together with our implementation partners and customers to to help to you know make some suggestions, often based on existing uh, implementations and and the capabilities of your content platform and your search platform, uh, in order to work into this plan as well. Certainly, uh, our customers often have some great ideas as a starting point. We often have some as well, and it tends to be a very collaborative process. Um, and that I think also feeds into this you know familiarization stage here, understanding what features are available and thinking about which ones make sense. Um, you know, does it make sense to start to personalize your content or is that not relevant for your particular site? We, we feel that more and more personalization of, of search, of, of recommendations and so on is important, but there are cases where it's not necessarily. I think of, for example, a librarian type use case uh, where you know, I just I want all of my users to get the same experience and, and get the results in the same order. Uh, but there are many cases, often commerce related, where that's not the case. So it's good to think about um, Think about this early uh, as you start to, to walk through this sort of uh, this sort of process. Um, we do find that uh, with Sitecore in particular, with Caveo and Sitecore in particular, uh, there's not a massive amount of expertise needed in in Caveo in order to implement Caveo within Sitecore by our customers. Typically, that work is done by uh, uh, solution in, uh, system integrators, solution partners. And we do have a wide network of those who are certified and, and understand how, how best to take advantage of the, the, the framework that we provide for, for building search components into Sitecore. Um, but making sure to follow really the best practices around, around the use of those, those components can be a, 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 an important part uh, of this process as well. So understanding, you know, getting acquainted at least with the tools, making sure that your implementation partner has some good understanding of, uh, of the way in which Caveo for Sitecore is designed and what the best practices are. Um, we do provide, along those lines, uh, I think an extremely valuable project guide document uh, which walks you through uh, from pre-installation right through implementation uh, what features are available, what are the best practices, what are the recommendations that we would make. And then, you know, over time, uh, again, those uh, using those standard Caveo components within Sitecore, uh, we really do feel uh, enables marketers, I suppose, the, the people who are designing your website, who are configuring your website, I suppose, uh, creating your, your whole site experience, they can use Caveo components along with the other Sitecore components and perhaps other customized components, uh, enabling your marketers or your people who are managing your Sitecore site, at least, to be more autonomous, to not require to, to call a developer every time they need to make a little change in, in how search is working as or relevance is working in their in their site. Um, Taking advantage of those usage analytics uh, statistics, um, uh, 
key, key stuff. Uh, I wouldn't say you necessarily have to look at them every week and make changes and decisions and tweaks uh, based on what's happening there. But it, um, you know, essentially, when you provide a search box on your website, you're, you're providing an opening or, or a way for your use, users to tell you, <clears throat> well, frankly, what they're looking for, what, what they need uh, from you. Uh, and so you know, it's very important to, to listen to that, that voice of the customer, if you will. We do also find then that um, often our customers will do an initial simple implementation of Kaveo uh, and Sitecore, or simply Kaveo. But those components, those capabilities, that indexing uh, uh, capability often leads to more and more different uh, applications of, of search and of relevance uh, within your environment. Maybe you start off with a commerce site and you then realize, oh, we also need uh, search, better search in our support uh, environment or internally or on you know, our blog site. So re-implementing uh, tends to be easy. You can take advantage of, uh, of this unified index platform, index all your content in one place, but perhaps only expose certain parts of it on certain pages on your site and so on. Um, we really find that very, very often uh, that, that's, that, that's the process that our, that our customers walk through. Um, we would also say, uh, please do feel free to try it, whether it's a matter of reaching out to your Sitecore implementation partner to talk about uh, how they could um, set you up with a demo of, uh, of Kaveo for Sitecore. Uh, we do provide a, a free download of a 30-day trial, fully functional, uh, of the Kaveo for Sitecore um, component, which does give you a 30-day uh, access to a, a, a Kaveo cloud organization, including all the features that we've been talking about and many that I didn't have time to talk about today. Um, but typically, yeah, you know, reach out to us. Uh, uh, Clara will be following up with uh, with uh, email uh, around this, uh, this webinar, and we'd be very happy to talk to you in more detail about what your requirements are. Uh, and please do feel free to visit kaveo.com slash sitecore for lots more information. Uh, and of course, you know, do feel free to reach out to us in any other way. Uh, Clara, with that, I know we're about at the end of uh, the time we have here, but if there are any questions from uh, people in the audience, I'd be happy to try and take them now. Thank you, Paul. Your presentation was great. We do have some questions, so um, let's start with our first here. Um, we are upgrading to Kaveo Cloud. Will AI capabilities work with our on-premise index? Um, you're upgrading to Kaveo Cloud. No, uh, actually, yeah, you, you need to be migrated to the Kaveo Cloud in order to take advantage of um, of the machine learning capabilities for, for query suggestion and promotion. They, they will not work with your existing Kaveo index. Again, I think an important thing to keep in mind is that what our machine learning capabilities are learning from is not so much the index, actually. It is the, it is the usage analytics information. So you do have to be using Kaveo in the Cloud, which is where our uh, usage analytics is, is logged in order for us to, to learn and make recommendations. All right, thank you, Paul. Uh, we do have another question here, uh, but before that, I just want to remind everyone, if you have a question, uh, please type it in the questions um, section in the, the panel, your GoToWebinar panel, as we can't unmute you at today's webinar. Thank you. Um, for the next question, are all the Sitecore Kaveo components available for MVC and web forms? Uh, yes, they are. Yes, they are currently. We will, we will at some point be uh, be deprecating support for uh, for web forms, but uh, at this point, we we do support both. Perfect. Thank you. Another question we have here: Does Kaveo in the cloud support Sitecore on premises? Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, both Sitecore on premises and Sitecore in the cloud as well. Um, Sitecore in Azure PaaS or, or hosted for that matter, as well as on-premises. What about Azure? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, 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 both uh, both IaaS and PaaS uh, um, versions. Perfect, thank you. Uh, with Kaveo, do we completely avoid utilizing Lucene, um, Azure, as you mentioned before, and Solar within Sitecore? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, um, you do still want to use, well, with the most recent versions of Sitecore, you do still need to use Solar in order to, for, for the non-customer uh, facing indexes. If you're already, by the nature of your question, I think you're probably already quite familiar with uh, how Sitecore indexing works. Um, Sitecore uses 
solar for uh, a bunch of internal, uh, basically quick database lookup uh, indexes. What Caveo replaces is the master and web indexes uh, of Sitecore. We replace or coexist with uh, the solar or Lucene indexes for uh, for those for those and potentially some custom indexes as well, but not the, if you will, internal only uh, Sitecore indexes. Great, thank you. Um, and how long does it take and how much effort to migrate from Coveo on-premises to the cloud? Hmm. That's always one of those uh, interesting questions to respond to. Uh, it depends really on several things. How many Sitecore instances you're dealing with? How complex are they? Um, what other kinds of sources you need to index, perhaps? Uh, what different sorts of user interfaces you're building? Um, and really some of the query pipeline rules that you might build in, in, in between to, to tune relevance. Now, for migration, um, depending on the version of Caveo for Sitecore that you're using currently uh, on-premises, you may uh, you may actually look at this as perhaps more of a uh, a re-implementation. You, you you can't actually migrate your on-premises index to the cloud. You do need to build uh, your index from scratch uh, in the cloud. However, you can take advantage of uh, the configuration that you've set up for what content to index. You can take advantage of uh, your search pages, your existing search pages, but it will depend a little bit on which, which version of Caveo for search Sitecore you're currently on uh, internally. You may need to upgrade that version step by step. It may be easier in some cases to simply re-implement, um, you know, build a new search page using our up-to-date uh, uh, search components, build a new index using uh, our uh, updated configuration files and so on. But we'd be happy to talk talk in more detail with yourselves and your implementation partners about the uh, the details, of course. Yeah, thank you. And finally, can you summarize the main advantages of moving to the cloud? Yeah, uh, just you know to restate a few of the things that uh, we mentioned earlier. Um, certainly, high availability and scalability really inherent in the cloud platform without you having to worry about managing multiple mirrors, for example, if you're uh, already a Caveo for Sitecore customer, you might know what I mean uh, with regard to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, certainly, of course, not having to worry about the hardware uh, installed within your own environment. Those are you know, IT-related considerations, uh, certainly. Um, Caveo on-premises is gradually, uh, you know, it's going to at some point be, be deprecated as a supported platform. Um, we are not really adding new features to that uh, version of the platform. Uh, Caveo machine learning capabilities are only available in the cloud. Uh, some of the features that we briefly looked at today around things like query pipelines are implemented quite differently in the cloud and I think far more flexibly. Um, the whole concept of user context that we were talking about, um, both from the point of view of personalization, uh, machine learning, and even just more manual um, uh, query pipeline rules, those that sort of context concept is really only available uh, in the cloud as well. So, I mean, those are, to me, some of the super high-level uh, summaries of, of the advantages of being in the cloud from an IT point of view, and also from a, you know, features and functions of the, of the platform point of view. Uh, I hope that's helpful to you as well. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, I don't see any more questions in the queue. If you do have one, um, please contact us and we'll make sure to follow up with you. Um, I think now will be a great time to wrap up this um, this webinar. Thank you so much, Paul, uh, for presenting. Uh, before we leave, just a couple of quick reminders before uh, we sign off. We'll send a recording to all attendees within the next 24 hours. And please remember to help us improve our future webinars by completing the brief at this the the brief survey, sorry, at the end of the session. And on behalf of Paul and the rest of the team, I'd like to thank you for attending our Caveo for Sitecore demo webinar session and have a very great day, everyone. Great, thank you.